So imagine a world where the seeds of modern computing were planted not in the glossy halls of tech giants, but in the visionary sketches of a computer scientist in the late 1960s. This is the world of Alan Kay, whose revolutionary concept of the Dynabook sketched the blueprint for the personal computing revolution long before the first laptop or tablet ever powered on. Kay envisioned the Dynabook service manifesting in three distinct physical forms, all of which were brought to life decades later. So there are actually three physical renderings of the Dynabook we thought about. One was the notebook. And we call it the iPad. And one was Nicholas Negroponte's idea of the sensitive wristwatch. Apple Watch is the most personal device we've ever created. And then one was something that went in your pocket that had a head-mounted display and glasses. Introducing Apple Vision Pro. Today, we're diving into the saga of the Dynabook, Kay's brainchild which helped predict the future. Gary, ideally, if you could have anything you wanted from the computer industry for Christmas, what would it be? Well, Stuart, I've been waiting around for the Dynabook. This is a, <laughs> this is a concept that was introduced at Xerox Park uh, early 70s. So, uh, Karen, if you're watching, uh, <laughs> next Christmas, Santa wants a Dynabook. <laughs> okay, so picture this. It's 1972. Nixon's gearing up for round two in the Oval Office. The Miami Dolphins are redefining perfection in the NFL. And the Godfather is ruling the box office. Computers? They're around, but they're these mammoth room-filling behemoths. Intriguing to some, intimidating to others, but personal? Not in the slightest. And that is where Alan Kay swings into this picture. Stationed at Xerox Park, the playground for research and development at the photocopying Titan, Kay was already piecing together a vision for a more personal computing experience. Influenced by pioneering tech like the flat screen displays at the University of Illinois, the RAND tablet, and the flex machine, Kay's aha moment came in a 1968 visit to Seymour Papert and Cynthia Solomon's logo classroom, where students were tackling complex math through simple programming. Kay, already an early personal computer user for work, saw the potential for a kid-centric computer that could revolutionize learning in the same way that logo programming did. Enter the Dynabook concept. You see, it was in 1972 that Kay published his highly influential paper, A Personal Computer for Children of All Ages, presenting his vision. He also constructed a cardboard model seen here to demonstrate the hardware design, including the portable format, flat screen, and stylus. The name Dynabook embodied the device's dynamic capabilities in an easy, book-like form. Even as technology limitations made a working prototype impractical then, the concepts deeply impacted succeeding platforms. While groundbreaking computationally, Kay intended the Dynabook not just as hardware, but a new medium for creativity and learning. Imagine a device that could turn you into a writer, artist, musician, or mathematician. It was designed to be so user-friendly that even a child could master it, yet powerful enough for an adult to use. It was envisioned to be as portable as a notebook, featherlight, and packed with many features, a trailblazer on all fronts. So why didn't this visionary device ever materialize? Quite simply, the technology of the 1970s fell radically short of realizing such an ambitious vision. Microprocessors, displays, batteries, and wireless capabilities still lay in their infancy. Nowhere near ready to enable a lightweight tablet device with the Dynabook's conceptual power. Moreover, the trademark Dynabook already belonged to Toshiba since 1958, who would in fact use that branding themselves decades later for a line of laptops. So even if constructing a functional prototype was possible, Kay would have had to release his conceptual device under another name entirely. Nonetheless, at Xerox Park, the modest hardware of the era did not stop Kay and his team from using the Dynabook concept to envision computing's future promises. The Envision specifications represented their holy grail for a personal, portable device, symbolic of the potential intimate, creative machines could one day hold. The Dynabook as a technical product died on the drawing board, too advanced for realization. But by embodying emerging ideas about computing's capabilities, the concept nonetheless lived on as inspiration at Xerox Park. 
the Dynabook dream became a guiding North Star, pointing researchers towards the future shape of personal technology. Though never built, the Dynabook's conceptual impact rippled outward significantly. The Xerox Alto, which shared much of Kay's design ethos, became what he would call an interim Dynabook. It was kind of like a test bed at Park, simulating many of the graphic user interface and multimedia capabilities that Kay had envisioned. As a pioneering early personal computer, the Alto brought major strides towards making computing accessible through innovations like the desktop metaphor, object-oriented programming, and what you see is what you get document editing. Beyond productivity, Alto prototypes running Smalltalk brought Dynabook-esque creativity to life, from music composition, to graphic design, to animation. In showcasing Alto prototypes, Park researchers shared their small but tangible step toward Dynabook ideals. None other than a young Steve Jobs was blown away upon seeing the Alto's graphical interface firsthand, later noting it as a key inspiration for Apple's Macintosh project. I was so blinded by the first thing they showed me, which was the graphical user interface. I thought it was the best thing I had ever seen in my life. Within, you know, 10 minutes, it was obvious to me that all computers would work like this. So while the Alto was not the portable kids tablet that Kay envisioned, it proved a working test bed for several pioneering interface ideas that formed the graphical DNA in countless later mainstream devices. Though the Dynabook itself remained conceptual vaporware, its vision kicked off a software and hardware revolution that the world takes for granted today. Also, we spoke of Jobs a second ago. Let's fast forward to 2010. Enter the iPad. Now you might notice some similarities between the iPad and the Dynabook, and you'd be right. But there are also some key differences. The iPad totally nailed it when it comes to media consumption and user experience. But the original model didn't quite hit the mark on Kate's vision of a tool for creativity and education. And remember how the Dynabook was supposed to have an integrated stylus? Well, the iPad didn't have that at first. Plus, there was no physical keyboard and the iPad design wasn't exactly typing friendly. Yet despite the differences, the core ethos of the iPad still echoes facets of Kay's original Dynabook vision. At their hearts, both concepts aspire towards creating intuitive personal devices that could empower creativity. In interviews, Kay's ideas across computing still ring remarkably ahead of their time, even today. He envisioned the Dynabook manifesting in three physical forms. Decades later, Apple brought strikingly similar devices to life with the iPad, Apple Watch, and now even with a mixed reality headset, the Vision Pro. The details and capabilities differ vastly across five decades of progress, but in outlining multiple portable computing models turned to creativity, communication, and convenience, Kay effectively anticipated several defining products that Apple built their empire on. His Dynabook laid the seeds of imagination. Apple cultivated generations of hardware and interfaces, transforming how we engage with technology and information today. Now, believe it or not, Alan Kay actually joined Apple in 1984, and according to him, Jobs aimed to develop a tablet computer inspired by the Dynabook concept. Also, at the time in 1983, Apple was secretly working on a tablet prototype, which was internally called Bashful. However, Jobs was famously outed by Apple's board just a year later in 1985, shelving any potential early Apple tablet plans. Now, Apple did later draw from tablet computing ideas for their new NPDA line starting in 1993, although Kay was not part of that team. Though featuring core functionality is envisioned for the Dynabook, the new and still lack the full ambitions for children's learning that Kay intended to realize, but still, it represented incremental steps towards the eventual goal. But nevertheless, everything that we've talked about in this video wonderfully illustrates how Alan Kay's 1968 vision laid core groundwork that still influences personal technology today. Modern touchscreens, graphical interfaces, and creative programming owe enormous debts to the Dynabook's conception decades ago. The Dynabook itself rested only in sketches, too premature to function. 
Yet, like seedlings scattered widely, its ideas took root through other channels before blossoming more fully in today's gadgets. So when we cradle our iPads, we likewise cradle over 50 years of patient progress. Every inch a tribute to the innovators like Alan Kay, who dared imagine computing so intimately. Hey, so thank you so much for watching this video on the Dynabook. If this is something that you enjoyed, it would be great if you could give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, or maybe even subscribe. I'm going to leave you with a few other videos that you might enjoy as well.